Well, a warm welcome to this talk. It's Thursday, the 2nd of June. Now, China's just uh, basically released the lockdown in Shanghai, so I think we can expect an awful lot of cases there pretty soon now. The United Kingdom things are going down in the United States. The BA2 bounce we had feared doesn't seem to be happening or not. Ha it's happening a little bit, but not much. Let me be a little more, more precise than that, give you some figures, give you some details on this. Now, the United States as a whole, uh, new cases, um, 101,000 yesterday, 3% up on the day. So slight increase on the day. But of course, it's much more important to look at hospitalizations. And that's what we have on this graph here. So this is the overall hospitalizations, this upper line. And this is intensive care admissions here. Now, we do see that they have been really quite high throughout the pandemic in the United States. And I believe we know why this is. It's the amount of comorbidities, the amount of obesity, the amount of high blood pressure, the amount of the elderly in the population, uh, the amount of chronic obstructive pulmonary disease in the population. I think we can explain really quite a lot of that and, and not to mention vitamin D deficiencies and other uh, social uh, problems in the States as well related to hospitalizations, for example. Um, so we do kind of know partly why this is. But it has been high. And if you look at that there, so that's that's kind of March, isn't it? So Omicron, this is this is the Omicron spike here in hospitalizations, of course, massive uh, Omicron spike in the United States now going down now. But we noticed that the intensive care admissions went up as well in the United States, whereas in the UK, they didn't. And I think that's got to be largely due to the comorbidities that were around, combined with perhaps slightly less uh, natural immunity and slightly lower rates of vaccination in the state. So given that we don't really know how many infections there are now, because the cases are picking up very, very few of the infections, um, it's the hospitalizations that are most useful uh, thing to go on. And in the States, we do see they are going up slightly at the moment. Now, given that cases are going up just a little bit overall, we can expect this to go up a little bit, but not. it's not going to go very high again. I think it's, just, I think it's going to go up a bit and then it's going to go quite satisfyingly uh, down. And hopefully the intensive care admissions will stay down as well. So I'm fairly promising as as we head into the summer months. There will be a slight increase in the southern states over the past few months, in, in ter over the next few months, sorry, in terms of cases, because it's so hot and people are going to go in for air conditioning and be closer together. So there will be a bit of an effect there, but it's not going to be, it's not going to be a huge effect. We know that's going to happen because it's happened over the last two years. So that's now fairly inevitable. Now, sobering thinking, um, since January 2020, so the, the duration of the pandemic, at least one in four have been infected and at least one in 133 people have died in the United States. Um, now, this, of course, is ridiculously low. It's way higher than this. Um, that's just what they can say from the official figures. The infection survey in the United Kingdom, I think the last time I checked, it was about 74% of people had been infected at some point. Uh, no reason to suspect the United States is any less than that. And indeed, it could be more than that. But one in 133 people have died in the States. And that's of the whole population, mostly elderly, of course, mostly with comorbidities, but still human beings that are no longer with us. Uh, this is the pattern of deaths in the States. Pretty well what we would expect. The initial sort of wave there, the original Wuhan infection then this would largely be the alpha wave there. This is largely the delta wave there. And the deaths higher uh, in the Omicron wave in the States. That's the bit that's different from the UK. Now, um, the debate about vaccination rages on. And um, I think times have changed. Let me show you what I mean by that. Or the risk benefit analysis has changed. Now, um, let's look at this graphic uh, here, for example. This is the US vaccinations related to cases. So this is um, in people that are uh, fully vaccinated here, the number of cases in the fully vaccinated. So this is fully vaccinated. And this is uh, unvaccinated here. So we see they see the difference between here and here is the, the protective effect of the vaccine in terms of cases. 
and we see it's about two to one to three to one. So uh, vaccination is reducing the likelihood of someone becoming a case, roughly by a factor of about two times as high in the fully vaccinated. So we do see some protection against being diagnosed as a case. I'm not saying protection against infection. Um, I don't think we really know that. But in terms of being diagnosed as a formal case with, with a, some sort of test, <clears throat> then we see that effect, that protective effect with um, vaccination. But we do know it's much less now. The gap is much less now. So does that mean that vaccination is less important now than it was earlier on when there was a bigger gap? Um, you can decide what you think about that. And when we look at the uh, vaccination to death rate, uh, rate here, so here, here we see, the this, again, this on the bottom is the people that are fully vaccinated. Along here. That's their death rate. And here's people that are unvaccinated in the States. This is their uh, average death rate up here. So we see a, a marked difference. Now, if we go earlier on, we see a huge difference here. So to me, the argument for vaccination, when we were advocating it on this channel is absolutely huge here. Way, way greater than the uh, side effects that we now know are occurring from the vaccines. I'm not minimizing that at all. We have talked to several vaccine injured people on this channel. Uh, tragic situations. Some getting better, some not really improving as much, nothing like as much as we would uh, like. But you can see the difference there is huge. Way less doubly vaccinated or fully vaccinated people dying compared to unvaccinated. But then as we go further on into Omicron times, we can see that the gap is getting smaller and smaller until now it's really quite small. Now, they, they, they do give this figure here. This is from the New York Times data. But now the gap between there and there is really quite small. It's all, it's all in that one dot there. So now the protection against death between the unvaccinated here and the vaccinated, the fully vaccinated here, is much less. So there's still an argument for vaccination there, but the risk-benefit analysis has changed. That is the point we are uh, we have been making for some time. So I believe that the advice we didn't, we, we didn't give advice. We, we we gave evidence that it was efficacious on this channel because we're careful not to give advice. But um, I, I believe we were saying the right thing earlier on. And I think that graph shows now. Okay, this graph CDC data we could argue about it, but it's it's in it's in the kind of right ballpark. Uh, that the protective effect here was high against death, whereas now it is much lower in terms of ratio. And it's good to see that the uh, the Centers for Disease Control are actually now openly talking about the uh, benefits of uh, and the effect of natural immunity which is a bit of a change. They haven't been doing that very much lately. And it's still not the data we would like, not by any means. But they are saying uh, high levels of population immunity from both vaccination and infections. So they are saying it's both now. Uh, as reduced, uh, the, the, the risk of medically significant disease, hospitalisation and death from COVID-19 is greatly reduced for most people, direct uh, quote, which of course is true. So glad to see that they are openly talking about that. Still not giving us all the data we'd like, particularly uh, in, in terms of the uh, immunity generated by people that are unvaccinated who've had the natural infection. Because remember, th th this line here for the unvaccinated tells us nothing about whether they've had the natural infection. I think what's happening here is more and more people have had the natural infection. Uh, and of course, uh, Omicron is intrinsically less pathogenic. Just a couple more examples from the States. Um, New York, um, hospitalizations, COVID-19 patients in New York City, up slightly, up slightly. And again, this could continue to go up slightly, but I'm expecting it to go down really quite soon because the cases were down a little bit. Okay, it's only 2%, but the cases are starting to trend downwards now. We've seen this quite a few times in the pandemic in New York has kind of led the way, and then the rest of the country has kind of followed. So they've always been a bit further ahead. Now cases are going down. Hospitalizations will start going down soon. But of course, hospitalizations in New York are dramatically down. I mean, it's incredible. This was, this was the Omicron surge in hospitalizations, absolutely huge. 
but relatively short-lived compared to the previous wave here that was quite wide in terms of hospitalizations. This one was fairly narrow, which is good to see, uh, but, but remarkably high. A lot of people all at the same time were hospitalized. Now, in New York City, since January, this is quite sobering as well, one in three people have been infected. I'm sure it's nine out of ten, but that's the official data we have, um, or at least eight out of ten. Uh, but for New York City, the death rate has been really quite appalling, getting on for half a percent. Um, at least one in 206 people uh, in New York have died since uh, January uh, 2020. Really quite high indeed. Um, New York State, uh, new cases fell down 5%. Hospital admissions in New York. Why this is not this is the, the old whole New York State area, not just New York. And th th these are the different age groups of of course here. And this is the uh, this is the total number. So these are the different age groups going down. Uh, we do see the number of hospitalizations now starting to go down, and I would expect that trend to continue because of the amount of immunity. And in New York State, since January 2020, one in 284 people have. Uh, died not insignificant now i've got most of this data today partly from the cdc of course but also from the uh, new york times that i've done a, re a pretty good job of tracking this pandemic it must be said um so new york times uh in data for new york city which they're giving they've actually done a lot of stats on this i suspect well i'm, I'm sure uh, that they must have some professional statisticians working for them they've done a really uh comprehensive job on the stats uh the times uh, relies on reports from both city and state health departments good because this is what we saw remember we saw this in russia for example didn't we we saw that the official government figures were ludicrously laughably low but when people looked at the different regions where there was still integrity in the reporting we could see that the death rates were really astronomically high so the official propaganda was completely underpinned by good quality uh, local data in Russia. I'm not saying the situation is analogous in any way in, in New York but it is good to get that uh, sort of local level data. The figures may not match the health department statistics they say that is that is uh, for sure. Now let's have a quick look at the uh, quick look at the United Kingdom. Um, so this is England summary. Uh, people tested positive going down, but of course we're not really testing. Um, deaths within 28 days of a positive test. Again, deaths are down. There is no question about that. Patients admitted to, uh, in England. Hospital admissions way down, and virus tests conducted very uh, low. Of course. So. The main thing we need to look at is healthcare, and uh, here, here we see it. Um, if we look at the last three months, for example, we see there's a continuing, declining trend in uh, patients admitted to hospital. Um, patients in hospital. Let's look at the last month. Again, nice descending trend. The last six months, the two humps of the Omicron. Uh, it's like a camel, isn't it? two humps of the uh, the Omicron wave, the BA1 and the BA2. Last three months, our hospitalisation is going down steadily. And intensive care, uh, mechanically ventilated beds, if we look at the last six months, it's gone down since Omicron came, constantly gone down since Omicron came. Apart from this in the BA2 period, just because there were so many patients uh, all at the same time. Um, but now um, um, going down and remaining remaining low which is good news. Now, just very briefly before we finish, we'll look at uh, Shanghai. Shanghai has just lifted their restrictions. Um, so there's been, in Shanghai, uh, 15 new cases reported. Uh, the zero COVID policy is not reversed. It is officially still in place. Um, and that is declared as they reversed the zero COVID policy. Complete, complete fig leaf of a statement. Makes no sense at all. Um, two months of lockdown, appalling hardship, economic ruin. 85% of people are now basically liberated since Wednesday morning. There's a few hundred thousand na in neighbourhoods still locked down. Road barriers, police tape removed, traffic's back to 60%. People are getting physical exams in hospitals. Telephones are being fixed. Gyms are still closed, which is not unreasonable. 
some factories in closed loop meaning these poor people have to sleep on the factory floor basically they're not allowed out there's regular testing mask wearing of course you need tests negative tests to go into public transport negative tests to leave the city and beijing declined foreign vaccines now um the Sinovac that they use mostly in China is a bit of a strange vaccine. We looked at it before and, and when we first learned about this, so it must have been way back in probably uh, mid-2020 mid when we first talked about this, what the Chinese have done is actually taken the whole live virus and uh, killed it, attenuated it, and they inject the whole dead virus, which it sounds bit like it should be a really good way to vaccinate people because you get this polyclonal response, which is great, of course, and you'll get many more different types of uh, antibodies and many more different types of stimulated uh, B and T lymphocytes to fight the infection. But the problem is it doesn't bear out in practice. So after one dose of Sinovac, the efficacy is way less than, way less than one dose of Pfizer or Moderna. After two doses of Sinovac, it's way less than uh, Oxford, AstraZeneca, Pfizer or Moderna. But after three doses of Sinovac, it's actually better than the Western vaccines. You actually get a better protection against death. But the problem is, a lot of the older people in China, because they've lived through the Cultural Revolution, simply don't trust the state. Uh, that's my interpret interpretation of it. And so older people are still, the vaccination rate is very low, and the Chinese don't seem to have capitalised on this two months of draconian lockdown to try and um, get older people triply vaccinated, because with the Sinovac, you need three doses of vaccine. And because that hasn't been done efficient, efficiently, there's going to be an awful lot of deaths in China uh, over the next uh, month or two. Now, the zero COVID policy is still there, but people are now traveling around. So COVID is going to spread absolutely massively. The only way they can stop that is with further draconian lockdowns, which would probably kill more people than, 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 it's, uh, than it would save um, and economically be ruinous. So I don't think they can do that. So I think almost like North Korea now, um, Omicron is just going to run rampant through China and unfortunately a lot of people are going to die and tragically the ones that are going to die are the ones that have the mistrust of the state through living through the cultural revolution because they haven't been triply vaccinated and China has refused foreign vaccines. Now I don't blame the Chinese for refusing foreign vaccines because three doses of their own Sinovac vaccine has a higher protection against death than the, uh, the mRNA vaccines or the adenovirus vector vaccines but uh, not enough of their older population have got it. So there is going to be some um, very unfortunate situations developing in China. But they had no alternative. They have to open up and develop uh, natural immunity. Y you cannot stop Omicron, as we've said many, many times. OK, so that's a brief situation. The United States looking good. The United Kingdom looking particularly good. The United States will be following the UK pretty soon and getting much, much better. China is going to have a pretty tough uh, couple of months, I would think. Thank you for watching.